Hi everyone, happy Tuesday. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, where we relax and craft and chit chat and just have a nice time, nice evening together. And uh, we're working on the Krista Quilt, Sh Charming Chevron's Quilt. It's our newest project that we're working on. And we are going to ultimately make, you know, a pile of these little chevron pieces. Turn them whichever way you like, it still ends up being a chevron. And uh, we are to the stage that we have chain pieced one giant, giant long little fan of uh, little squares here. So we've sewn, we've, we have a diagonal line here and we've sewn on one side of the diagonal line. We're done, we finished that yesterday and we're gonna sew on the other side of that diagonal line tonight. So that is the plan. We will just sew, sew, sew. Oh, Joe, you received your fabric. Oh, that's awesome. Wow, you got yours really quickly. That's awesome. Yay, good. Glad to hear that the fabric for my fabric sale is starting to get out there. Oh, balmy three degrees above zero. Yeah, that's about what it is here too, Marianne. Kind of crazy. But all right, guys, I'm going to flip you around. We'll get going on this right away. Uh, oh, so there is a link to get the pattern, the Charming Chevrons pattern in this uh, Facebook post here. So you can go check that out there if you want to join us and uh, support the designer, and uh, which is Krista Watson from Krista Quilts. And so with us, uh, oh, and I did put a link because a few of you guys asked. Uh, I have my little my little kitty pins on. Uh, this was from they were from a blog post that I did for the How to Sew uh, website for Better Homes and Gar Gardens a few years ago, and I put the link to make them. It's a free pattern, so I put the link to make them in uh, my Facebook post here to uh, in the um, product scene in this video a little further down if you scroll up. So uh, check that out. If you wanna make some quick little felt pins, they're super duper easy to make. Uh, you can make them in an evening. Oh, and my dad is uh, here tonight. Uh, he just popped in here. He is on vacation with family in Granada. So hello from Granada. I saw him eating, pictures of him eating sushi late or earlier. So uh, he's in the warm and has sushi. <laughs> so awesome guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna flip you around and we'll get sewing tonight. Thanks again for joining me. Ah oh, yes and it got so cold here again too. It is like we're in the negatives again but it's supposed to get up to 30 you know that that hot sunny 30. <laughs> oh man we're hoping for 30s here. It's probably, I mean, they're on the beach and everything. All right, so here we go. This is my giant pile of, this is all the chain. So this is the continuous chain right here. So I was thinking I would put all of this in my lap, but then I was thinking later this evening that what if I just kind of stack it all on one side here, one side of the table here, and then I will feed, you know, this when I'm doing the other side, I will feed it over onto this side of the table. I'm hoping, and then just loop it around. I'm hoping maybe that will work instead because then I don't have my fabric all over the floor or something like that. So I'm just gonna leave that over there and I'm gonna put the new stuff over here. So I think that's, that's my uh, fabric management plan for the night. So we'll see, see how that works. All right, I got my quarter inch presser foot on again. So that just means I can sew right along this edge here and it'll be a quarter inch, which is good. Oh, the hubs is in here tonight too. <laughs> All right, so uh, what we've done so far is we've sewn, we have this diagonal line here that we drew on every square. We've sewn a quarter inch on one side, which is gonna get us a pretty half square triangle, right? Like this. Now we want to sew on the other side so we can get another half square triangle. And then we'll ultimately cut, cut this in half on our diagonal line. And uh, so we'll get, two, we'll get two half square triangles out of each of these squares. So uh, let's get going. Again, I'm, I have the stack over on this side and I'm going to put the other stack on that side once I get sewing. So I've, I've left these all connected. 
You could cut them apart if you want, but I think it's just going to be kind of fun and easy to just leave, leave the chains connected as I sew. All right, let's get the machine on and get this going. All right, so now again, I'm just, I just rotated this 180 degrees, so I'm still going to put my diagonal line on that quarter inch presser foot, and I can use my business card as a guide as well. This is at a quarter inch. And by putting that on the quarter inch mark, it will give me that seam that is a quarter inch from the diagonal there. So just like what we did on the other side here. So the nice thing now is I don't have to spend time putting all these layers, these two layers of fabric together anymore because they're all together already from the last, the last time we sewed. So all I have to do is when we get to this point is make sure the top is up and just keep going. Oh yeah, this is gonna go so much faster. So we have about 200 or so of these squares, maybe a, a couple less, maybe. Maybe a couple more actually. I think we might've done a few extra. And whenever it feels like this like loop that I, or this pile is getting taut, I'm just gonna kind of pull a few more down. And so, so my fabric's coming straight at, um, straight towards the machine. I don't want like it pulling off to the side like this. Yeah, I'm hoping so, Deborah. I'm hoping I can just zip through tonight. So I still don't wanna, you know, I could put the, since we're just doing straight lines, I could put the pedal to the metal a little bit, but I'm uh, staying a little slow because otherwise the camera shakes quite a bit. Man, this is that one that I got really crooked on the other side. You know, I can see with my straight lines that I, I'm still veering off a little bit. Diane, I'm not quite sure what project we'll start on next. It might be the zipper pouch um, book cover from my book. And I think we might put a little bit of embroidery with that. But I'm not positive. So we will... Um, I'll definitely keep you updated on that, but I definitely want to do a smaller project. We might pop a smaller project in the middle of this project just because it's a little bit, um, a little bit bigger. Block sewn, still have to square. Yep, I'm still going to have to, oh, your blocks are sewn and, and you're squaring them. That's awesome. What do you mean sewing off? Ah, I'm not sure what I was talking about, Gretchen. Oh, maybe my straight lines, like I'm, you know, I'm just looking at my lines that I stitched the other direction and I'm, I struggle a little bit with sewing straight lines, which sounds crazy, but you know, if I, if I stop thinking about it, then I just let the machine pull the fabric and I'm not guiding it straight anymore. And I can tell that sometimes when I get to the end of, um, sometimes when I get to the end of a piece of fabric, sometimes I veer off a little bit and I'm trying to stop myself from doing that, but it looks like I'm still doing that a little bit here and there. And I think it's just cause I've moved on to the next block before, before, um, finishing the first one. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm more careful than I used to be. And that's from working on the Splendid Sampler. I probably wouldn't need to be so careful with these, but for the Splendid Sampler, some of the blocks and squares were so small, some of the little pieces, and they had to be just right to, um, to work. Oh, the name of my book, it's Sew and Stitch Embroidery. And I will for sure let you guys know, um, I'm actually almost out of books, so I, I have to order some more, but I think I'll, I'll let you guys know when that project will be. And I might put together a little, a little bundle so, um, so that 
you know, you guys can have all the supplies and zippers and stuff that you might might need in the book if you if you need it as well. Oh, Patricia, I'm so sorry to hear that. Send in, send in some good vibes your way. Not, not good. All right, I just want to show you guys that. Oh, thank you, Carla. Oh, thanks, Joyce. Oh, I'm so glad you guys like the book. But yeah, I, I need to order more, and uh, and I'll uh, maybe put a bundle together with some fabric and uh, zippers and stuff like that. So I, I just want to show you guys this quick. So here we go. This is what they should look like. You have your diagonal down the middle, and then you have a seam on either side. And you know, we will now. You know, now they're attached on both sides. We will snip both of these off uh, once we got our big long chain. Yes, yeah, sending sending you s some sparkles your way, Patricia. All right, so see it, it's getting kind of taut here again. I don't have any slack, so I'm just gonna pull a few more of these guys forward from my pile. But I think this is working. Now I, I don't have everything on the floor, which is kind of what I was thinking I'd have to do. Have a snaggle of of um squares on the floor by my feet and no, I didn't really want to do that. Oh yeah, we're going to see if uh, this bobbin can last this entire length, which I'm hoping it should be able to. We just put a fresh bobbin in. I mean, this is a lot, a lot of, this is a long straight line, so we'll, we'll still use a lot of a lot of um, thread. I might run out of my top thread before the bobbin. We'll see. <laughs> I'm gonna have to have a, another spool of thread on deck here soon. I don't have any more of this gray, and I don't really want to. I don't really want to buy any more. I, I have other thread with, that's a similar weight. It'll just be a different color, so <laughs> it might be dark blue. Even we'll see. Or it might be a light cream. Some of, a lot of my colors are like these purples and uh, some darker colors. So maybe, maybe that blue or something might be the way to go. But it's pretty dark. It's almost like sewing with black. So I don't know if I want to do that. We'll see. I'll have to use something. And you know, if I see the seams a little bit, I'm not going to worry too much. This quilt's just... Just for myself, and I'm, you know, it's that practice. I'm practicing the, the quilting on it. It's not like it needs to be like a perfect show quilt or anything like that, so I'm not too worried about thread being a different color. I'm more excited about using up thread than it being perfect. Get through all the purples first, then we'll see. We'll see all the pretty fabrics in reverse this time. But yeah, I'm just just following that diagonal here. But yeah, check out that that uh, post about my uh, little kitty pins. They're so easy. And if you just want like a cute little uh, quick thing to make, or like, you know, if you have a friend who has cats or something, it'd be a, just a quick little project to make up. Oh, she calls the chevron pa pattern a zigzag. Yep, that's perfect. In my brain, it's kind of a zigzag. Uh, to, I never grew up with chevrons being a thing. It was always zigzags. Yeah, isn't it, Joyce? This is going so much faster. Yeah, I don't have to place fabric or anything. And like I said, you know, I probably could 
so a little faster, but you know, then my lines start not being as straight and you know, the table starts shaking and all that too. Oop, flip that around. I had to put bright fingernail polish on to match, match the bright quilt. I figure I've kind of been accidentally, um, accidentally painting my nails the color of my project, so I thought maybe I'll just go with it this time. Uh, the, the kitty pins, it is just a couple pieces of felt and a little bit of embroidery. That's it. So it's all, it's all done by hand. And uh, seriously, you just need two pieces of felt to, to stitch together. You stitch the edge together and, and you put a little embroidered face on and it's just really fun and easy and quick. slack here again. We're still in purples. I haven't I haven't gotten to pattern pieces yet. Uh, yeah, the green nail polish matched most most of the product projects for sure. <laughs> I need some nail polish that pretty coral color that that I uh, had embroidery floss for, for the I Love Home quilt. That'd be a pretty nail polish color. It's almost time to get some new colors, so we'll see. They only last so long. Oh, get some slack here again. Oh, and we're almost, we're almost to the first, first print. So man, this is going much faster. But yeah, we're not placing fabric uh, this whole time. It's all together for us already. So that's that's awesome. Just get a little tangled here and there, but then you just separate it and good to go again. I'm actually excited to to snip all these little pieces apart. I think that'll be kind of fun. We'll have a night of snipping. Each little step takes time when you have this many pieces. Oh, get some Vikings purple. Yeah, you know, I have uh, I have mixed feelings about, about that since I am from Wisconsin where it's Packers. So I don't know, I have a hard time with the idea of wearing purple. <laughs> but yeah, in theory, in theory, uh, uh, some nice purple nail polish would be kind of fun. I just don't know if I can do it. I'd, I'd feel, I'd feel guilty. <laughs> Although it would be cool if the Vikings got to play in their own stadium in the Super Bowl. That would be cool. I do have to say. So we'll see. <laughs> All right, we're to some patterns. Oh, what was the idea with the seam ripper? I, I missed it. I missed some of the comments when I'm when I'm trying to sew a straight line. So if if I miss something or don't mention something, uh, just write it again. If I don't respond, it's probably just because I just because I missed it. So the fabric keeps gathering behind the machine like this, and sometimes it gets like really bulky right here. So whenever you see my arm move, I'm just kind of pushing, pushing all this stuff off the table out of my way. But there, so we got our, our little pile started, and that's our big old pile over here yet that goes on forever. But alrighty, back to it. Oop, flip that guy around. Oh, use a seam ripper to snip all these apart? Was that what it was? That's a good idea. You finish your sewing and measuring today. Nice. Nice. That's, uh, that's a huge part of it. Ready to start. Ooh, laying out on the design wall. That's exciting. Oh, batiks in the dark background. That sounds so beautiful. I've been talking about... Um, 
I've been talking about batiks a little bit lately. We talked about it the other day, but I don't know, more and more they're they're in my brain curdling these uh these batiks. I want to do something with batiks really soon here. I have a couple of batiks in my stash. Not many, but but I I, I just they're just so rich and pretty and I love the painty look look to them. I love that they're dyed all the way through. I just I don't know, I just really like them and the more I see them, the more I the more I like them. So I don't know. I've never done a project with batiks really before, except for the ones that I suppose, you know, this isn't a batik, but you know, I had a batik or two in in my splendid sampler. Uh but not much, just like a scrap here or there, I think that I got from my mom. And man, I don't know, I'm itching to do a project, so I don't know, maybe our next, maybe the next project will have to involve boutiques. So later, later in the uh, year, after we finish this project, and after we do, you know, we'll do a couple smaller projects and stuff too. But later in the year, we'll we'll be doing that um, granny square quilt. So it's not it's not really granny squares like crochet, but it, it kind of it it's a reminiscent of of a crocheted block. And uh, oh man, I was thinking I want to use batiks, but for that I really want to use up more scraps because I'm I'm in use up all the things mode too. So I don't know. I still need a I still need a batik project because I, I do think I want to use scraps for for that. Although batiks would make it so beautiful, I think, and give it a little unique twist. I think just having all those painty batiks as the granny squares instead of like you know solids or something. I don't know. But that is down the line yet for sure. We will we'll be working on on. Uh, this guy for for a while but I do want to pepper pepper uh, little projects in here and there so we'll fit some other ones in they stuck the seam ripper in a hole of the spool of thread oh that's a good idea so then you just split them on top that's a great idea maybe we'll do that I think that sounds like fun I've never done that before but I, I know I can picture exactly what you're saying Pam they actually make a whole a whole device for that now. It's like a little thing that sits on your table that you can just do that with. I mean, I suppose if you're doing quilts like this every day, then a tool like that would be a time saver. I don't know if I need a whole tool for that, but I like the idea of making one up with, with a seam ripper. That sounds kind of awesome. I like that idea a ton. We'll have to do that for sure. All those little tricks. I want to try them all. Love that idea. Shimmy these guys down again. Okay, this is going so much faster than than the last few days. I love that I can keep just sewing in a straight line. It, it's it becomes super relaxing. You can just chill here. This would be a great project for like an audio book or something. Oh, Paula might have to, I mean, she can't hear me, but she might have to log out and log back in. Okay, I have a little fold here because I didn't press it very well. I'm just going to take my stiletto and flip that up. There we go. That works. I love this stiletto. It's like a little, a little extra skinny finger. You love the pressing open part too. Oh, interesting, Gretchen. That is what I'm kind of looking forward to the least, I think. <laughs> you have to tell me what you like about it. What you like about the whole pressing open part. Just because I need, I need uh, a vision of why I should like it. I don't know. Pressing to me is still the thing that I forget you have to do and it takes for forever in my head because it's it's that step that I wasn't accounting for so I just gotta you know get used to that I think more than anything oh 
Oh, okay. Okay, I get that, Gretchen. The by pressing it open, you get to see the different. You just get, you get to see the different fabrics as you're pressing. I, I get that. That's a, that's that makes a lot of sense. So yeah. So before we cut these apart, since we are we're cutting. Uh, oh, because we've been working on the backs this whole time, and and we'll get to see. We'll get to see the fronts. Yep, that's true. Okay, that's something to look forward to. I, I get it now. Uh, but before we cut these apart, so we need to slice these apart and then we'll press them open after that. But before I cut them apart, I want to mix them all together and then... Oop, I'm stuck back here. I want to mix them all together and then divide them into two piles, equal piles. Because remember, I need some chevrons that go this way and I need some that go this way and they're sewn differently. So I want to make sure that I don't mix them up at that point. I want to keep them separate so that I know, you know, that the one doesn't sneak in the other way. I I'm paranoid that I'm not going to make the same amount that go this way and the same amount that go this way. So uh, before I cut these, since they have to stay together, both sides have to stay together so we can get, um, you know, so we can put them together, the same fabrics. So before I cut them apart, I want to make sure it doesn't get all squiggled up with, with everything else. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not working, Paula. A lot of times it's, it's an update, so it's probably time for me to do another update to the phone, an update to Facebook. And um, if that's an option on your guys' side too, it's, it's always a thing, like they're always updating it. But yeah, so after this, I gotta get organized and, and that's, that's uh, where I'm gonna divide up divide them in half. I mean, you wouldn't have to, but in my brain, I'm thinking ahead and I'm like, I need to make sure that all these go one way and then all the second half go the, the other way. So I might even, I might even go through the whole process of one side before going through the process of the other, but I don't know, maybe not. I'll at least yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'll at least make an effort to keep both piles separate at all times. I'm thinking, I was, I was thinking that, oh, I could press open all of the one half first and trim them and even sew them together. But I think I wouldn't want to do that over again, like all over again. I, I'd rather just in bulk get it all done at once, I think, still. But I was thinking, oh, I could split it up in half, but no, I think I'll just keep doing the whole thing. Oh, well, there you go. Just grabbing four and making a block and then moving on. That is totally a legitimate way of doing it. Um, I'm doing it halvesies because I really want to, I don't want to commit to, I don't want to commit to a chevron yet. You know, like I don't want to necessarily... Like, you know, I did these two. I could just sew these together right away, but I don't want to necessarily commit that I want these two next to each other. So I want to have the option to move things around later. And that's why, that's why I'm, I'm just going to get it to like that point, my two separate piles. And then I'll lay them all out and, and shimmy them around. Yeah, the baggie is a good idea. I could put half in the baggie. I'll probably just put it behind me on, on my little sh counter shelf thing behind me. I'm not moving anywhere, so um, I don't think I need to baggy them up. But if I do move something or 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 like that, then I will. Um, then I think a baggy is a great idea. Oh yeah, I mean, that's just how I'm going to do it, Gretchen, just because I want mine all kind of mixed and matched, or not matched, just like all, just like a kind of a random looking mix. Unless I, I might put the purple ones together, I'm not, I'm not sure. But uh, I know some people are putting theirs together right away, but uh, some of those look like they're meant to go together. So, you know, if you got a plan, then, you know, go with that for sure. I think this, 
keeping them divided is going to work work for me, I think. Oh, you can see yourself stressing about matching and pairing. Oh yeah, that's, you know, that's one of the reasons I try and make things random as possible sometimes. Um, because when I try and make things match up and stuff, then I get too perfection-y in my head and I can't, I can't get away from it. So I on purpose make things random sometimes or look like they're random. <laughs> Planche, ma'am. Uh, that's a bummer, Linda. I don't know why why you're not getting notifications anymore. I would maybe check to see on a, on Facebook at the Penguin and Fish page to make sure that you have notifications turned on. It's right next to the like button. If you click notifications, it should say like see first and um, what's the other one? Oh, like be notified for live stuff. You have to make sure those are checked. And then in theory, it should work. I need some slack in here. Who knows though, they're always, they're always, always changing things. And actually there, there was like new, they were doing a new thing now too that, um, that's changing their algorithm and stuff again, so that might be a reason why you're not getting stuff notifications either. But in theory, if you are watching, they should know, Facebook should know, oh, hey, this person wants to watch this thing. Let's keep feeding them that. I mean, that's, that's what they want to be doing, so. Who knows? Facey pages. Oh, they're going, closing schools again in Atlanta. Yeah, that's, I mean, you know, they're not, down south, you're not prepped for all this snow stuff. We had our first snow emergency day today, but all that means is you park on one side of the road or the other. It doesn't mean actual, like, there's a snow emergency. All that means is, like, don't park on this side of the road because they're going to plow that side, so... When you drive into work at your normal time, because that's not being, you know, closed down, just don't park on the one side. Or before you go to bed, make sure you park on the other side of the road. That's all snow emergency means here. Oh, your schools were closed in southern Illinois. Oh my goodness. We got a lot of snow yesterday. Well, and that's, I think, like four and a half inches or so, and that's why, you know... It's a snow emergency, they have to start plowing. And we had wind chills again today, but I think I think by Thursday, I think we're supposed to be in almost the high 30s again, which is like springtime. So I'm, I'm excited for that. I did get out today. <laughs> it was uh, bright and sunny. That blinding blinding winter sunshine. You made a mistake of using a couple of fabrics ahead. Oh, a directional print. Oh, Pam. I think that's okay. Then, um, oh, it was a drag to cutting and laying out the blocks. I think in this case that could almost be a good thing because then you could, you could flip your quilt around in whatever direction and it's, it's gonna be nice no matter what. Probably don't have to worry about it too much. It's a from every direction quilt then. All right, our pile's getting bigger back here. He would open the front door. Oh, and it would be a wall of snow. We had, what was it last year or the year before we had we had that a little bit. All right, I, I like sewing this side of the diagonal way better than the other side where we had to put the fabrics together and stuff too. This is way more enjoyable. Just sewing along, it's nice. 
We're still in this first round though, this first uh, grouping of fabrics. But this will definitely go a lot faster than, than the other one. At most, I think we'll get this done in two days versus the three and a half or so it took, or three days, I think. Got more slack again. Man, I've been looking at all of your your um, chevron quilts that you've been posting so far in the penguin and fish crafters group, and I'm totally jealous of all of them. They're all looking so pretty, and it, with all of them, I'm like, oh man, I wish I would have done those colors or background or or all of it. I mean, everything that you guys are choosing is just looking so cool. I'm I'm really excited to see. How they look with like all like rows of chevrons. I love all of them. Like they're all just like I just want to like squee when you see all of them. You know, it's just like oh, it's so pretty. They're all gonna be so different too, which I love. It's always a neat phenomenon that all of these. Uh, all of these projects always turn out so different from each other. Yeah, Pam, you had that floral background on yours, right? The white floral, like the big floral. Oh, that fabric is so cool and what a neat background fabric. I just, I love it. Makes me wish I had a huge floral like that. I'm thinking through my stash and I don't I don't have like a neat big floral. Ooh. Bunching up here again. Yeah, it made me almost, uh, I mean, I'm excited for mine too, you know, I, I'm excited to see what it looks like, but man, it made me want to, made me wish I didn't use a solid for, for my background color. I think that's just a neat idea to do a, an, an overall print for the background fabric. That didn't occur to me. I, I like it. Oh yeah, Donna, I love that so much. It just, uh, just all the all the ways different people are doing it. I just think it's so cool. They're all gonna just be so unique. Such a simple pattern too, right? You know, how can you make that look different from each other? I mean, they all are gonna look just totally individual and different. Some slack here again. I know the one thing about seeing everyone else's though is like, oh man, now I need a project where I do a a big floral in the background instead of a salad or like, oh man, now I need to do something with batiks and stuff. So the projects never get less and less. It just, just gets more and more ideas, right? I suppose that's a good thing though. <clears throat> That's funny. What does he know?
You should say, I'm an artiste. This is exactly what I was meaning for it to look like. I'm excited about this one. I still really like like this this floral fabric on the gray. I like all the fabrics still. And I like that I'm not uh, I'm not um, hoarding them. <laughs> like oh, here's where I ran out of out of floss. I'm going to just might as well snip that while I'm here or out of thread last night. So wow, we, we got, um, there's more squares than I thought before we finished last night when we ran out of floss, or ran out of thread. Although I guess we ran out of thread right away last night, didn't we? We didn't even get through one. So uh, we had an hour, about an hour's worth of sewing on a new bobbin. So I don't know, maybe I have a whole lot less bobbin than I thought. We'll see, I suppose. Yes, Gretchen, me too. So I have to sandwich the I Love Home quilt. I have a few quilt tops laying around now. I'll have this one. Actually, I think just this one and the I Love Home. And uh, yeah, need to get that guy sandwiched too. Oh, we're getting a little tangled down here in the pile. But we'll be okay. You know, I just really, really love that all these little bits of time in the evening, you know, all we're doing is sewing this straight line forever, but eventually it will, we'll have a finished something, you know? I'm getting more and more comfortable with the tiny little bits of consistency to get things done. Yeah, it's making me happy. Oh yeah, the grandma's quick, uh, grandma's kitchen to, to sandwich too. Oh, speaking of getting things done, who was it? I think, oh man, Gretchen, was it, was it you? Uh, but it was suggested to me that I should have a day, a day to just finish things up, like a day of the month. And so I don't have this in stone yet, but I was thinking maybe we have like a, a first Friday UFO day or something. So like every first Friday of the month, we just stop everything that we're, you know, we stop the whatever project we're working on for that day or that, you know, evening that we're together here and work on one of our unfinished, unfinished projects. Because, yeah, I got some hanging out here, like the Splendid Sampler and um, some other ones that it's like, man, I just need a couple evenings on that, right? So... Oh, it wasn't yours, Gretchen. Oh, sorry. Um, but, yeah. So I'm thinking, first Friday UFOs is, is what I'm thinking right now. And maybe we'll have to turn it to two days. I don't know. We'll see. But, uh, yeah. So I'm going to throw that up on the calendar. And um, every first Friday of the month, you know, it's a Friday. It's just a chilling day, don't have to stick to our scheduled thing, and we'll just try and get something done. Or maybe it'll be like a, a enough, <laughs> you'll take the credit, maybe it'll be enough motivation to continue it on the weekend or something, you know? Start the UFO on, on the Friday and finish it on the weekend. Yeah, we need to squeeze in a day or so of that. So yeah. So keep that in mind. I I um you know, it's not set in stone, but I think I think uh, first Fridays. I think maybe that'd be a good place to start. 
first Friday UFOs and then, uh, you know, we'll pepper in on more of a schedule. Uh, Friday UFO blast off. Nice, Julie. <laughs> but then we'll, we'll also fit in the, the schedule some smaller projects because, you know, with all these bigger projects, at least how I like working, I like having smaller projects filtered in with, with the bigger projects just because then you, you get that quick sense of accomplishment. Sometimes you just need a breather, you know, for, for just a little bit. And then you can finish up the project, you know? So I like how we're trading off some small projects and, you know, maybe when we finish this top, maybe we'll do a little small project and then come back to the quilting. We'll see. Little breathers here and there. Yeah, my two piles are starting to combine a little bit on, on the table. Hopefully don't, they don't get tangled up. Ooh, the zipper is calling your name. Yeah, I think that'll be a nice, fun project. I do have some uh, new embroideries coming out soon, so I'm thinking that might be a fun thing to combine the embroideries, the new embroideries with um, the sketchbook cover. But yeah, so I was thinking, you know, I was thinking of maybe getting some kits together for that too. So then you guys, you know, don't have to find zippers and you don't have to find the right sketchbook size and stuff like that. I can just have that all all um, available for you guys just to make it easy. So so we'll see. I'll, I'm starting to think about that a little bit. But it'll be a little while. We got this project to work on for a bit first. Although who knows, maybe we'll just be cruising along on this and time will catch up on us. Oh, the, are you serious? Oh, that's funny, Gretchen. I'm not laughing. Although it is kind of funny, like my, uh, my sister-in-law, she po posted like a little meme or something the other day. She's in North Carolina. And it was something like, you know, when there's a Category 5 hurricane coming to North Carolina, everyone's like, meh. But when there's like an inch of snow coming, then, then it's like the apocalypse. <laughs> Which as a Midwesterner, that sounds like the exact opposite of what it should be. Uh, yeah, I can't even make a snowball here right now. Actually, we do have a little bit of snow, but it's not... It's not, uh, we got all that snow yesterday, but it, it's really, really light and fluffy snow. Dry snow, it's not, it's not wet snow. See, I know all about the different types of snow and, you know, what snow does what and... <laughs> oh, man. If it's going to be a sticky snow, the one that you can make a snowball out of or a snowman or... Or if it's just going to blow right away uh, or blow out of the way. Heavy snow, thick, wet snow. <laughs> oh, you won't be able to make a snowball with your the snow that you're getting, I see. <laughs> Funny. All right, I think I'm, I'm almost, uh, I think we're coming up on a color change where we're, um, you know, like I'm going through this loop of fabric. You know, I'm, it's like the strawberry, then it's this one. And, you know, so I have that loop. We're almost done with this first loop. I'm seeing the next loop. And that's just because we, we stacked a bunch of fat quarters, like a stack of four or five, actually maybe six fat quarters together when we cut. So we have like groupings of of these squares and our first grouping I'm seeing the end of it coming up here so that'll be good that means we are about halfway done with this I'm thinking because we had all the, that purple at the end of this one so that would make up for any fat eighths, you know, because I, I didn't have all fat quarters, I had to have some fat eighths. So yeah, I think we're about at the halfway point of this. I'm not counting or anything. 
Oh, yep, you see the pearl bracelets. Yep, I'm almost done. I actually think that was the last pearl bracelet. Uh, that's, that's this fabric here where it looks like a bunch of pearl circles. But yep, I think that was the last one. I'm on to the next grouping in uh, three pieces here. And I think that might be, oh no, we got the, the fat quarters. There's a few more. But yeah, I think we're at the halfway point. So yeah, only uh, only two nights to get this done instead of the three when we had to put the uh, pieces of fabric together. So that's good, we're cooking. Cooking in slow motion, but it's, it's happening. All right, I think this is the last one from that first grouping. And uh, we switch to the second grouping, which has, uh, we start with strawberries again, but they're black strawberries this time. Or black background. There, getting a little tangle back here. There, haven't seen this one in a while. The pretty purple with the big flower on, painty flowers. You know, maybe we'll even get done early tomorrow. If, if that's the case, then uh, we can, we'll divvy up the piles. That shouldn't take too long. So I want those two piles to be working from. I think while they're still still together, this two halves are still together is would be the best time to organize that. Out of here, fabric. Yep, they look like uh, two equal piles on my table now. Yep, we're cruising tonight. You know, I was just thinking for trade shows and stuff as designers, um, you know, I'm just thinking of, this is Krista's quilt here. And uh, I was just thinking like, if she had to make this for a show, a lot of times for shows, you don't get fabric until like the last minute and then you have to sew up a quilt really quick. So to show what the fabric looks like in a pattern and everything. So you're, you're quilting under the gun, which isn't as fun, but man, I'm just thinking going through all these tons of um, squares. If I had to do this with a, a big deadline looming, this would become completely stressful and not zen at all, I'm thinking. <laughs> Just this never-ending pile. But if you don't have to do it for a deadline, then it can just be chill. Oh, explain how I'm going to divide the fabric up. Oh, Libby, all I'm meaning is that once I cut these... Oh, you know what? I can't divide it up yet. I have to, I have to trim all these. So I'm going to cut these apart. You know, they're all, they're all connected still by the little threads. I'm going to trim them apart into squares again. And uh, once they're in squares again, then I'm gonna make two piles because I need to make, I need to have two separate piles because one of the piles, they all have to go in this direction and the other pile, they all have to go in this direction. And so all I'm gonna do is split these squares, you know, have a pile of squares here and a pile of squares there that are the same amount of squares. That's all I mean. Because then I can keep them separated because, you know, the one I have to make go left and the one I have to make go right. It's just so I can be doing the same action over and over again. I don't want to confuse myself by blending those steps together. That's all I mean. 
And I should check in with the instructions again too. <laughs> see see what that has to say. In the pattern. I think this one's gonna be kind of cool too. This this uh um kind of geometric guy. All right, we'll go for about four more minutes or so. Every other uh, little minute is a chance to get a few more of these guys done. Yeah, so maybe tomorrow, I don't know. We're, we're either halfway or maybe a little over halfway. So maybe tomorrow we can construct that little seam ripper guy to separate all these. That'd be kind of fun. Haven't done that before. Instead of snipping them all with the scissors. Sounds like fun. So one thing I'm, I'm watching out for is sometimes this fabric wants to, the underneath fabric wants to flip underneath. I want to, I have to make sure that I don't accidentally sew, sew it. So I'm, I'm paying attention to that underneath fabric, making sure it's not flipped underneath. I don't, Tracy. I'm going to try and make one. So someone suggested just putting a seam ripper in a spool of thread. And I thought that was kind of a neat idea. So that's what I'm going to give a try. Let's see. I'm, I think I have a seam ripper here. You know, so I'll have this guy. Let's see. What we got here. That's maybe a little too loose. Maybe something. Use a little smaller one. There, just stick it in like that. There we go. So we got a little little thing there. Then we can just split them all on the top like that. So, <laughs> all right, I, I'm all set up for tomorrow then. I'll, I'll just leave that, leave it there. Hopefully I don't stab myself in the meantime. But yeah, I'm, I'm stoked. I've never done that before, but I think that'll be, that'll just work really sweet. Assuming that's sharp. <laughs> I haven't used it much. I think that's a newer one, but I don't know if it's a good quality seam ripper. That's something I would love. Like I've seen them, um, I've seen other people have them, but like a really nice, like razor sharp seam ripper. And sometimes they're really pretty too, like all metal or something. Kind of like a scalpel. <laughs> I would like a fancy seam ripper like that, I think. Uh, they seem special for me for some reason. Compared to like the little plastic handly ones. I just got paranoid about bobbin again, but I'm, I'm hoping we have enough for the rest of this. All right, I'm definitely calling the new pile bigger than the old pile. I think we might call it there. Let's, uh, I just want to show you guys where we're at. So here, you know, I can actually put this all up here. Well, maybe not. It's expanding on me, but yeah, so there's not too much left, you know, I don't know. It's a lot still, but it's not as much as what we got done tonight. So these are all the ones that are completely done. They're the ones that have uh, the sewing on, on both sides already. So yeah, we are more than halfway there. I'm stoked. So all right, guys, I'm going to flip you around and we will call it an evening. Hello again. So awesome. That is going way speedier. So yeah, I think tomorrow we'll cruise. We'll get the rest of these done. And yeah, 
Then we'll start snipping it with our little contraption, our little uh, seam ripper contraption. <laughs> That'll be fun. I haven't done that before. So I'm excited for that tomorrow and it'll feel like a whole new step. I'm, I'm stoked. So, all right, guys, I will get this up on to Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube where you can watch the replay and you can watch the replay here on Facebook as well. And be sure to check out uh, my little my little pins. I did put a link to, to those, a little simple quick project for you guys. Uh, that's in the Facebook post here. And uh, you can check that out. And again, of course, check out the charming chevrons pattern and Krista quilts. So, all right, guys, have a great evening. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.